to Liberty Baptist Church. Take your hymnal if you like. Let's all stand and join the choirs. We sing number 336, He is able to deliver thee. Tis the grandest theme through the ages run. Tis the grandest theme for a mortal tongue. Tis the grandest Turn over to number 432, God Leads Us Along. Yeah. 
Amen. We're so glad to have you here on this Father's Day. We've been uh, had a lot of things that we've been doing. We had our men's sports banquet uh, yesterday evening. We had uh, a great attendance, filled the gym up. We had nine people make professions of faith last night. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord for that. It was great. Then uh, we had Brother Bailey in Sunday school this morning. Some of you got in to the uh, service and you wondered where everyone was at. We were out in the gym. We had a breakfast. We had a men's uh, Father's Day breakfast out there. The, uh, the uh, gym, again, was filled up, had a great um, amount of food brought, and we appreciate everyone that brought food this morning. And then uh, Brother Bailey uh, did a, a brief demonstra demonstration for us out there. I know the ladies... Uh, Every time we have Brother Bailey come, the ladies always get after me and say, well, we never get to see him. Well, you got a chance this morning, amen? And so uh, we appreciate uh, the Baileys being here with us. They're still out there for Junior Church uh, this morning as well, and uh, then they'll be leaving this week. And I just appreciate the Baileys so very much coming to be here with us. They drove all the way from Upper Michigan straight down to be here with us. It took them about two and a half days they drove straight down and they're pulling they're driving a truck pulling the trailer with uh, everything in it and so we appreciated them coming and being here with us uh, for this uh, uh, for this weekend and we just appreciate so very much them being here and and we praise the Lord for them I'll just remind you about uh, of course this is Father's Day and Father's Day we don't have an evening service we encourage the families to to stay uh, and be with their families on that day and to be an encouragement to them. After the service, we will, uh, we've left everything setting up out there in the gym from yesterday, from last night and this morning. So after the service this morning, before we go home, we'll clean everything up and we can use your help. We'll remind you about that in just a few moments. Also, uh, we want to thank you for being here with us today. If you're visiting with us, at Liberty Baptist Church. This is the very first time with us at Liberty Baptist. We're so glad to have you here on this Father's Day. We have a packet of information we would like to put in your hand, and uh, if you haven't received one of those packets of information about our church, we'd like to put that in your hand. Slip your hand up if you're here for the first time at Liberty Baptist. You didn't get one of these packets of information. Hold your hand up. Keep it up for just a minute. They're going to put one of those packets in your hand. Anyone else? First time here at Liberty Baptist. Well, we're glad to have you here if you would do this right over here, we're glad to have you folks. If you do this for me, inside there's a, there's a card, and uh, if you would fill that card out after the service in the foyer at the welcome desk, they have one of these books for you, uh, the Bible Promise book. You can get one of those. Just hand them your card. They'll give you one of these books. It's a great book. It lists the different promises from the Word of God, and, uh, and so... We'd like for you to have one of those today right after the service. But we're so glad to have you here with us today at Liberty Baptist. I'm going to ask Pastor Dan to come and lead us in a word of prayer this morning. I couldn't think of as, uh, anything, but as he said, they drove down from Michigan. I was thinking, yeah, they, they, uh, and he's a cowboy, so they were driving cattle yeah. the whole way. <laughs> so if you see some dairy cows, uh, help yourself. So glad to have you here today. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we're grateful for this day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we are thankful, dear Lord, for what you have already done on this property this weekend, as we think of last night, and those that uh, came to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. What a, a great joy it is to know that uh, their destiny has been changed uh, for all of eternity. And they have a home in heaven with you waiting for them. Lord, we pray that if there be anyone here today that also needs to make that decision to make Jesus their Savior and to trust in Christ and know for sure that heaven is their eternal home, we pray they would take care of that today before they leave. We're so thankful for the faithful that are here. Pray that you would bless them, the uh, Liberty Baptist Church family, and uh, Lord, for the visitors that have come our way. May they feel welcomed and uh, be able to uh, enter into uh, the joy of praising you uh, through song and through offering and, uh, Lord, even through the preaching, that uh, we would agree with the word of God today and let it speak to our hearts and that we would leave today a changed person. And we're 
so thankful for this opportunity to be together today, centered around the Word of God. We pray for the preaching and that it would uh, work in us and the Spirit of God would do a special work. We pray for the ministries next door, for the junior church and primary church and nursery ministries, and, and for the, the uh, John Bailey and his wife that are there working with them today. We just thank you for that, and we pray they'd have a, a great morning. And we'll give you thanks and praise for all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Christ is your Savior, you can come just as you are. Yeah. We're going to stand and sing our theme chorus for the year, He's Able, He's Able. Would you join me in standing? He's Able.
take a moment and wish someone happy Father's Day this morning. as you find your seats. He healed the brokenhearted and he set the captive free. He made the lame to walk again and he caused the blind to see. He's able, he's able, I know. Usher's got a, we have a gift for every father here with us today, and I always try to choose something that I like or I want, you know it, and uh, <laughs> I wanted one of these, and uh, we're, so we're going to give these to all the fathers here today, and this is a four-in-one screwdriver, and it's, it, it's, not a, it's not a cheap one, you know, this has got, it's chrome-plated, and it has a soft grip on there. Some, they, some of them can be so cheap, you know, it, you just use it one time and it falls apart. I think this is going to last for a long time right here. But I, you're always reaching for a screwdriver. This has got four different bits in it that you can use, and so I think the fathers will like this. The mothers may like it too, but uh, we got it for the fathers. All the fathers, uh, stand up right now. And our ushers are going to pass one of those to every one of you. Stand up, fathers. All the fathers, stand up. We're so glad that you came here today to be with us and quickly ushers let's get those things out they're working on it back there 
Thank you for coming. As soon as you get one of those, you can, you can go ahead and sit down. As soon as we get one of those for you. But we're so glad to have you here with us today at Liberty Baptist Church. This morning, you honor us by your presence today. Thank you very much for being here. Quickly, they're getting those out to everybody. There we go. Now, I don't want you to use these during the service. <laughs> Somebody suggested to me, don't give them to, out until the end of the service. And uh, please do not open it up. I, I know I don't have to tell you, but don't open them up and unscrew the chairs in front of you or anything like that. I, we'd appreciate it. I want all the chairs working when you leave today. And uh, they are getting some more for you, fathers. There you go. Huh? Oh, here's another. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. Let's give all the fathers a big hand this morning for being here with us at Liberty Baptist Church. I've got to cut this article out. This is an interesting article that I cut out. It, the uh, heading says this, China's richest man says he was happier before wealth. I don't know if you've heard of this man. You'll know the company that he works, uh, that, uh, that he owns. His name is Jack Ma. He's China, uh, China's richest man. And he said in his speech this year that he was happier working as a teacher for $12 a month than he is now as a billionaire. Ma's company, and you've heard of this company, I know that, I, and I'm not uh, big on the internet and all of that stuff, but I've heard of this company. Uh, the, his company is called Alibaba. Alibaba, if you order things, then you've probably ordered from that company, and he's, he's the guy that owns it. It's valued at $25 billion. $25 billion. When it was listed on the New York Stock Exchange in September, this last September, he gave a speech before the Economics Club at New York City, and he spoke about the burden of being ultra-rich. He said that when you reach $10 million, you've got troubles. That's what he said. I know some of you are thinking, I'd like to have that trouble. I know. I, I, I know you're thinking. But he told uh, CNBS that uh, there's a lot of pressure that comes with the responsibility of great wealth. Then I found what the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verses 6 uh, through 10. Uh, the Bible says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen? For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be therewith content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition for the love of money is the root of all evil. It's not money that's the root of all evil. People misquote that. It's the love of money that is the root of all evil which while some covet after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Then over in Proverbs 23 and verse number 5 it says this, Wilt thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away as an eagle toward heaven. So we need to be content with what God has given to us. Amen. Let's be content. That's where happiness, that's where we'll truly be happy when we're content with what God has given to us. I'm going to ask the ushers to come to receive the offering this morning. Let's bow our heads ask God to bless in the offering today. Dear Lord, help us to be truly content with that which you've given to us, Father, and uh, realizing that Father, uh, contentment is the way to be happy, just uh, relying and trusting in you, knowing, Father, that you'll bring us that happiness. And, Father, I pray that you'll bless in our offerings. Father, help us to see your word go forward. Help us to see us be able to even take on more missionaries, Father, that are preaching the gospel around the world. Bless our people, Father, financially, and bless them 
every other way. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. song for today is number 250 tis so sweet to trust in jesus you can keep your seats on this one tis so sweet to trust in jesus number 250 tis so sweet to trust in jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon just to know the same the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him. Just to trust his cleansing blood, just in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing blood. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and more. Jesus. Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. 
pressing upward to gain the heavenly prize. Faithful men are my witness who have struggled and died, and they watch from the grandstand in the skies. Faithful men have gone before us, faithful men who fight and stand. I want to follow in their footsteps, guided by those faithful men. Jacob joined with the faithful, Joseph followed behind. Moses ran with the mighty men of old. There were David and Daniel, then came Peter and Paul. Now they chant as they run on streets of gold. Faithful men have gone before us. Faithful men who fight and stand, I want to follow in their footsteps, guided by those faithful men. Make me, Lord, a faithful man. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Pastor Eric and his dear wife will be leaving this week, going to Kansas, uh, up to Kansas, and he'll be there and uh, working with his brother, at uh, his brother's pastor of the church there. His brother said, interesting ministries, pastor of a deaf church there, and uh, does a great work, and we appreciate uh, the years that Eric has worked. Eric and his dear wife have worked with us, and... Pastor Brandon and his wife, they uh, met, went up, moved up to Pennsylvania, and they're working in a church there. And uh, so we, we miss these folks. I, I almost thought I shouldn't say anything because I might get choked up thinking about it, you know, and I, I'm trying to not do that at the very beginning of the message. But anyway, uh, I hope that you'll tell them that you'll see that. I have to be careful about talking about stuff like that. It just <laughs> chokes me up. Uh, we appreciate him being here with us. We'll see him again. Amen. They'll be back. Uh, they'll be back. And so, uh, but anyway, we appreciate the fine job they've done with us. Proverbs chapter 20. And uh, look with me down at verse 5. Proverbs chapter 20. And verse number 5, and we'll look at verses 5 through 7. If you can stand with me, stand with me if you would, please. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 20, verses 5 through 7. Follow along with me as I read these three verses. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water but a man of understanding will draw it out. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. I want to speak to you about the influence of a good father. Good fathers can influence their children for God. Good fathers can influence their children for for God. We need to be good fathers. Amen. We need to be good fathers. Good fathers influence their children for God. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Father, I pray that you would bless in your word as it's preached. Father, I pray that you would give us good fathers here at Liberty Baptist Church. Father, good fathers that would influence their children for God. If there is ever a time the children needed to be influenced for God. It's in this day that we're living. We need more children that are influenced for God. We need good fathers. I pray that we'd have fathers here that would commit themselves to influence their children for God. 
And Father, I thank you for those that are. And Father, I pray for your blessing to be upon them. I thank you that we have fathers that are here in church this morning. They could have been at home sitting in the Lazy Boy, reading the paper or watching TV, but they're here in God's house, and I thank you for them, and I pray for your blessing to be upon them just for being here on Father's Day. Now bless in the preaching of your word, and I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. There's a picture going around today. Brother Dan Lozier brought a picture. We went on a mission trip to New Mexico a few years ago, and uh, he's passing that picture around. Don't even look at it when he passes it around. I saw that picture, and I thought, oh, my. It, you know, I look so young in that picture. It just... Uh, uh, I thought, what in the world has happened? You know, I guess time. <laughs> I look at that picture, and uh, I look so so very young in that picture. I can hardly believe. But but don't you you look young too, brother? And so I, so it happened to both of us. But nonetheless, uh, a mother and her uh, son were looking at an album, and that, when he t showed when he showed me that picture this morning, I was reminded when we were up. Uh, for my brother-in-law's homegoing service up in uh, Illinois, Martha's uh, sister-in-law brought out a picture like that. She brought out the album. They were looking at albums. She said, she brought that picture, shoved it right in my face. She said, remember when you look like that? I said, don't I still look like that? <laughs> she laughed for 15 minutes after that, you know what? I said, no, that didn't make me feel good at all. Not at all. A mother and her, her little son were looking at a family album and uh, and they came to a picture in the family album with a young man with curly, dark hair. And the little boy said, well, who's that? And the mother said, well, that's your father. He looked at it and thought for a few moments, and he said, well, who's that bald guy in the front room that's been living with us? <laughs> it was Sunday morning, and... The father was sitting in his lazy boy reading the newspaper, and his little son was sitting on the couch reading the funny papers. And finally, the father said to the little boy, he said, well, it's time to get ready for Sunday school. So put the paper down and get ready, start getting ready for Sunday school. And the little boy reluctantly put the funny papers down and started walking to the other room. He turned around and said, are you going to Sunday school with us? The father said, well, no. And uh, he said, but you go and you get ready. And the little boy turned around again, and he said, well, did you ever go to Sunday school? And he said, yeah, when I was a little boy like you, I went to Sunday school every Sunday. He said, in fact, I got the perfect attendance award for going to Sunday school. The little boy shook his head and said, I bet it won't do me any good either. <laughs> the influence of good fathers. Good fathers can influence their children for God. What do we mean by that? They can influence their children to live for God and serve God and obey God. Good fathers can influence their children for God. Well, look at this proverb here, these uh, three verses in this proverb we see talks about a good father, the influence of a good father. First of all, we'll look at that. Look at verse number five. Good father, a good father is understanding. Look what it says. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Now that word understanding there means a man of wisdom. And it's talking about godly wisdom. There are different kinds of wisdom. There's worldly wisdom and there's godly wisdom. But here it's talking about godly wisdom, a man of understanding, a man of godly wisdom. Where does godly wisdom come from? Godly wisdom comes from God and from his word. Amen. And all God's people said, amen. amen. That's where it comes from. And so we need godly wisdom. That worldly wisdom will come from education. It'll come from uh, length of life, but you know, godly wisdom is what we need, amen? We need godly wisdom, and, uh, and, and, it, and it's referred to as understanding here. Children have to make all kinds of decisions, don't they? Children make decisions. They have to make all kinds of choices. They need to know which direction to go. And uh, the, the Bible tells us here in Proverbs that that answer seems to be 
like down a deep well. Look what it says. Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water. Finding those answers is like water that's deep in a well. That's what he's talking about there. But a man of understanding, a man of wisdom can help bring it out. That's what it's saying. Amen. And so if you have deep understanding, if you have wisdom, the Bible says that you'll be able to help that young people understand uh, the answers to the questions that they have, and they have many questions, and we need to be able to answer those questions. Isn't that right? We need to be able to answer those questions. The only way that we can is if we have godly wisdom. James chapter 1 and verse 5, the Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. And so we need to ask God for godly wisdom wisdom. We need godly wisdom. We're living in a day when many fathers are absent. Even the world understands this. I've noticed they've got some new commercials out, and it's talking to fathers. Have you seen those where it talks to fathers, and it tells fathers, just spend some time with your children. Do you see that? Even the world, I, I, what, what I find interesting, that even this is something we preach all the time, but even the world is saying that. Even the world understands that there's absentee fathers, fathers that are not spending time with their children. Listen, our children need us more now than ever before. They need some fathers to give them answers to their questions, and they have many questions, and so we need to be there so that we can give them answers. You say, where are our fathers? Fathers are leaving it up to their, uh, their spouses, leaving it up to their wives. Listen, praise the Lord for godly mothers, amen? <laughs> praise the Lord for godly mothers. But you know what? They, children need their fathers. They need fathers to give them guidance, fathers to answer their questions. They have questions. They need fathers to answer those questions. Fathers, some fathers are leaving it up to their wives. They're leaving it up to the school system, which is a secular school system. Secular means without God. They're leaving it up to a secular school system. My friend, they need God. Amen. They need a godly influence. They're leaving it up to uh, the, the TV, and they're leaving it up to their uh, their children's friends. Listen, your, your children's friends shouldn't be teaching your children. You should be teaching your children. <laughs> Listen, they ought to be asking you questions. If they're not asking you questions, then something's the matter because they've got them. They've got questions, and you need to be the one to answer those questions. Sometimes I've had fathers say, man, I hope they don't ask me that. You better hope they do ask you that. You know what I'm saying? You better, you better look forward to them asking. You better be ready for them to ask you that question. In fact, is that you need to give them the answers before they even ask the questions. We need to spend time with our children. The TV. You can't let the TV teach your children. Oh, my. I think our problem, one of the problems here in America is because of that. I praise the Lord for my parents. Yesterday, I could hardly believe it, but yesterday was uh, 20 years that my father has been in heaven. I could hardly believe it. 20 years. I thought, my, 20 years. I can't believe he's been in heaven for 20 years. But I miss my father. <laughs> I do. Even when I started this church, even just before he went home to heaven. I mean, I was, I was telling these folks right down here, I was standing next to his bed holding his hand when he went home to heaven. And I thought, oh my. Who can I go to now when I have a question? Because he answered those questions. Even right up till he went home to heaven, he was answering questions. Praise the Lord that I had a father a godly father that had godly wisdom that could answer those questions. You know what? We need to be godly fathers to answer those questions. Amen? They need the answers to the questions. Who's going to answer those questions? If we don't answer those questions, we need to answer those questions. And then our grand, even our grandchildren, they're coming to us. My son was able to come 
to the uh, banquet last night. I just appreciate him coming. <coughs> he had the, his son, uh, Davin, had a basketball game in the morning yesterday. He said, Davin's got a basketball game, but we're going to be there, Dad. <laughs> They called him and said, they called him at work and said, we want you to be in Detroit on Monday morning. And so he texted me back and he said, Dad, I'm coming, but we can't stay Saturday night now. They were first of all going to come and stay Friday night and Saturday and Sunday. Because Davin had a, you see my grandson, some of you saw my grandson, he's probably five inches taller than me. I said, that's not, that's not a big deal, but... Uh, but he's not very old. But uh, anyway, they came. My son drove all the way from across the state to come to the meeting last night. And then he drove back right after the meeting because he has to go. He has to fly to Detroit. But you know what? That honored me. Him driving all the way across the state just to give me a kiss and then drive back. And they came over our house just for a few minutes. And all of them are just hugging on me. It's a good thing. They need answers, don't they? Who's going to give them those answers? God has provided fathers. And we need to be godly fathers to be able to influence our children. Amen? And our grandchildren. We need to be the ones... To to give them the answers. A good father is understanding, first of all. Secondly, a good father is faithful. I reckon I'm going to cry all the way through this message today, so. Father's faithful. Look at verse number six. Most men, the Bible says, will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. You see that what that verse says there? It says most men will say, you know, I'm okay as a father. I, I'm doing pretty good as a father. I'm better than most as a father. Very few will say, I'm doing a lousy job. <laughs> Very few are going to say, I'm doing a really lousy job of being a father. Now, there are some that will say that. And that's what the Bible says. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. They're going to say, I'm okay as a father. But look what the Bible says in the last phrase, but a faithful man who can find, the Bible says, but who can actually find a faithful man? Someone who's faithful. There are very few that are faithful. Listen, we need to be counted as faithful unto the Lord. Amen? Faithful. Fathers. We need faithful fathers. We need understanding fathers, but we need faithful fathers. Fathers that will lead in the responsibility of their home. We need faithful fathers. Are you faithful? Faithful. What does that mean to be faithful? It means to be faithful unto God. You know our main responsibility as fathers? You know what our main responsibility as father is? Is to lead that home in serving the Lord. Do I hear somebody say amen? amen. Isn't that the truth? We're to lead our families in family worship. We lead our families in, in prayer and in reading the Bible. We're to lead our families in coming to church. We're to lead our families. We're to be the ones to lead our family in doing those things. I praise the Lord again for my, my parents that raised us up. My father, every night at the dinner table, he'd read the Bible and he would pray with us. And uh, I praise the Lord for my father. But you know, my dear mother, she's in heaven with the Lord as well. In the morning, my mother would take the Bible and read the Bible to us before we went to school. I can still, I always picture my brother Doug and I sitting there with my mother on the green sofa there in the farmhouse in Michigan, and I'd be on one side of it, my mother and my, my brother Doug would be on the other side, and uh, my mother would be reading the Bible to us, and then she would pray with us and and. Uh, put us out on fr in, front, in the front driveway to catch the bus, you know. And, uh, but uh, every morning my mother would do that. Every night my father would do it. I praise the Lord uh, for their faithfulness uh, in raising us up. And Martha and I tried to do the same thing with our children. What we would do is I would do it at the dinner table. We would read the Bible and pray with our children. 
at the dinner table. There's another thing. Even the world is saying, you know what even the world is saying? Even the world is saying you need to eat dinner together. Do you see that? Even the world is saying that. We've been preaching that for years, and here the world is starting to say the same thing. Isn't that something? Said so Here, we've been preaching it for years. Get together with your family and read the Bible and pray and talk with them. And now the world is even the saying the same thing because they know how important that is. A good father is understanding. A good father is faithful. A good father has integrity. Look at verse number 7. The just man walketh in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. A good father has integrity. Do you have integrity? Are you honest? Do you want to have honest children? If you want to have honest children, you need to be honest. Amen? You need to have integrity. If you want your children to have integrity, you want your children to be honest, then you need to be honest. The Bible tells us that here in verse number 7. And notice what it says there. The just man walketh in his integrity. And look at the next phrase, what it says. His children are blessed after him. If you want your children to be blessed, then you need to walk with integrity. You need to be honest. And then, my friend, your children will be honest. And you know what? Then they will be blessed, the Bible says. Don't you want your children to be blessed? Yes, you want your children to be blessed. You be honest. You have integrity. And, my friend, your children will have integrity. And your children will be blessed. I don't know about you. I want my children blessed, don't you? Amen? I do. I have three children. My oldest daughter, Dana, most of you know, and her husband's a pastor over there in Titusville. And, uh, and then my son, Nathan, he's the second oldest, and he's uh, there in Ormond Beach and, uh, with his dear wife. And then my youngest is Darcy, and she's married to Gus out there in California, San Diego, California. They're having their first baby in November, and so we're excited about them. And that'll be seven, the number of completion, amen, for us. There may be some more, I'm just saying that, but uh, praise the Lord. You know, uh, praise the Lord uh, uh, for our children. But y you know what? I want my children blessed. I don't know about you, but I pray for my children to be blessed. Do you pray that? I pray that every day for my children and my grandchildren. I go through the list every single day. There's not a day that goes by. I want them to be blessed. I want my children blessed. I want my grandchildren blessed. Amen. I want them to be, but we have to walk with integrity if we want that. We have to be honest. What does that mean? That means this. You know what it means? It means when we say something to our family, we mean business. Amen. If we say we're going to, hey, uh, we're going to have a family night tonight. You know what? You need to have a family night that night. Don't let anything stop you. If you say you're going to be home at 5 o'clock, you need to be home at 5 o'clock. Don't just say it. If you tell them, hey, I'm going to take you to the ball game, you better take them to the ball game. You better tell the truth. You see, sometimes we've gotten into the habit today that we think that we can say things, and, it, and if something comes up, it's okay. You know what? We need to tell the truth. You want your children to tell the truth? You better tell the truth. Sometimes those little things, we don't think anything about them, but my friend, they're big things to the children. That's a big deal to the children. If we say something, we better mean business. We tell, better tell the truth. We want our children to tell the truth. We want our children to respect us and respect their, uh, their mother. Then we had better tell the truth. I kind of chuckle at his story about a father that came home. He had been in this raffle at work and won this big old toy. He had five children. He came home, brought the toy. He said, I got one toy. I won this toy at a raffle at work. And he said, I know there's five of you. And he said, I thought, what I'm going to do, he said, of you children, he brought the children together. He said, I'm, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, children. He said, this is what I'm going to do. He said, the child, the, the, which one of you, and I want you to find out for yourself, which one of you uh, obeys your mother doesn't talk back to your mother and does everything that she says, and that, that's the one I'm going to give it to. All the children looked at one another and they said, Dad, you better keep it. <laughs> oh, well. You have integrity. A good father is understanding. A good father has integrity. Uh, a good father is faithful. I think I got these points out of line. Look at verse number six. Most men, uh, 
Again, a good father is understanding, a good father is faithful, and then a good father has integrity. And then, that's what the Proverbs tells us there, but how do we influence our children? Let me give you three ways we influence our children by being good fathers. Being a good father is a great thing, but that's not enough. There are three things we need to do. Number one, first of all, good fathers influence their children uh, by training them. Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. We need to train our children up. It's not enough just to be a good father, but you know what we need to do? We need to train our children. Some people have asked me, when do we start? You need to start as soon as they're in the womb. That's when you need to start. You say, well, what in the world can they learn in the womb? Well, you know, they've done a lot of studies about this, and they said... Uh, uh, they said that if you want to play uh, like uh, classical symphonic music while the children are still in the womb, that they hear that, it makes them smarter. How many have heard that? I've read about that. See that? I'm not just making that up, folks. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. That's why I listen to that kind of music all the time. I'm trying to get smarter. I know I'm out of the womb, but I'm still trying to get as smart as I can get. <laughs> Don't I listen to that? It might come to my office and I'm listening to it. I'm, I'm praying that I'll get smarter. <laughs> you know, you've been out of the womb for a long time, Pastor. I know, I know it, but I'm hoping that it still works. <laughs> but, you know, I think of John the Baptist. Remember John the Baptist when he was in his mother's womb and Mary came in and spoke to Elizabeth and he leaped within the womb? He heard that. <laughs> he heard that. And to, people say, I'm not joking about this. I think that we need to start educating them while they're still there. We read the Bible. Read the Word of God. You can sing uh, songs, amen? Sing hymns unto them while they're there in the womb. I think that we can train them even while they're still in their mother's womb. The Bible says, in fact, uh, look at, in Psalm 71 and verse 6, the Bible says, by thee have I holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's womb, uh, mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. Uh, and uh, it's talking about John the Baptist there in Luke chapter 1 and verse 41. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And so I think that we should teach them right then. We need to teach them uh, right and wrong. We need to teach them. We need to discipline them. I'm going to preach a message in a few weeks from Proverbs, and it talks about how we need to train our children when they're still young. You need to train them while they're still very young. Don't wait till they become teenagers. You need to teach them while they're very, very young, while they, they can still be taught and they can learn and so that uh, when they go older, they, they've already learned those truths. When they get to be a teenager, you know what? They've already made their mind up about most stuff. Now, I, you know, I don't give up on teenagers. I, I pray that the Spirit of God can work in their heart, but they're moldable and they're makeable when they're very young. You need to train them while they're very young. Don't let them go the way of the world. I mean, spend that time with them while they're very young. You need to spend time with them while they're, while they're very, very young. When our children were small, all three of our, uh, our children, Darcy came along late, but uh, Nathan and uh, Dana, I, I mean, every time, it was always a teaching time, the whole time, we were teaching them all the time. I would teach them when I would go to the grocery store with them, and we would go by the aisle where they had all the liquor and they had all of the alcohol. And back in those days, they used to have all the cigarettes and tobacco products. Uh, they don't do that anymore, but they used to have all of that down one aisle. And we were, when we would go by that, I would say to them, I would say this, dirty, stinking, filthy, nasty. And I would have them repeat it. And they'd say, dirty, filthy, stinking, nasty. I said, that's good. Let's all say it. Dirty, filthy, stinking, nasty. And so every time I'd go to the store with them, we'd go by that. They would come by that aisle. They'd go, dirty, filthy, stinking, nasty. <laughs> one day, one day, I was pushing the cart, and Nathan was sitting there, you know, in that little place. And uh, 
with a child's seat right there. He's, and I'm pushing him. And we go by that aisle. And he goes, bad, dirty, stinking, filthy, nasty. He really yelled it out. And there was a man standing right there. <laughs> that man had just pulled out a, a case of, of liquor. And little Nathan goes, bad, dirty, filthy, stinking, nasty. And that guy looked at him, and he quickly put it in there. His face turned all red. <laughs> I go, whoa. I said, have a good day, sir. <laughs> I don't know if he picked it back up or not, but you know what? A little kid. <laughs> we need to train them while they're young. I wanted to put it in their mind. You put it in their mind while they're young, so that would just, and so they think about that all the time. Good fathers can influence their children for God by training them, and not only by training them, but by your faith. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 through 17, uh, here we see the story of Timothy and how his mother and his grandmother influenced him, the Bible says, and from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Timothy's mother and his grandmother, they transferred their faith unto Timothy. You know what? As, as fathers, we need to transfer our faith to our children. We need to do that. My, my father transferred his faith to me and my brothers. There are four of us brothers. And you know what? We need to do the same thing. We need to transfer our faith to our children. We need to influence them. We need to instill it within them, our faith, the faith that we have. Listen, we've got to have faith that we can transfer to them. Amen? We want to do that. I praise the Lord. And my mom and dad transferred their faith to myself and all my brothers and sisters. There, there were six of us, and we're all, all of us serve the Lord. My sister Tanya is in heaven serving the Lord right now. But all the rest of my, my brothers, I have three brothers, they're all preachers. My baby sister's married to a preacher. You know what? Our parents transferred their faith to us, and I'm glad for that. We need to transfer our faith to our children. You say, how can I do that? There are several practical things that you can do. Uh, number one, you can share with your children one-on-one. -on -one. Let me tell you to do this. You know John, uh, John Wesley and his wife, one of the things that they used to do, they had a lot of children. I can't remember how many children they had. Can you remember? 18? They had a lot of children. Like, I think it uh, dances 18. I know it was a lot. I should have looked that up. But you know what? They had a lot of children. But you know what they did? they would spend at least one hour with each one of those children every week. Each child. Not as a group. I mean, they spent time with them as a group, but they would spend time with each child. You want to transfer your faith to your children? I would say, you know, I know it's wonderful to have all the children there, but you ought to spend time with each child every week. A lot of folks don't do that. I'm saying that's something that would be great each child, take them someplace and uh, just spend time with each child individually. Spend time with them all together as a family, that's wonderful, but also spend time with them individually. Teach them during family altar. I hope that you have family devotions at your home. If you don't, then you need to do that. You need to start having family devotions. You say, I don't even know where to begin. Well, we've got family devo we've got devotional books back in the bookstore. They're little Baptist uh, Baptist uh, bread that you can take that, and it has a little thing that you can read every day, and uh, has scripture in there. It has a little illustration in there, and uh, you can see Sarah. Sarah works in the bookstore back there. One of these days we'll have that. This summer we're going to put move that bookstore. We're going to widen our foyer out, and you'll be able to see it real easy. But you know what? That's where you can begin, right there. You can start there. You could read a proverb every day, amen? 
You read a proverb every day and just look at that. I'm studying the book of Proverbs on Wednesday night. Have you come to Wednesday night service? We're, read, we're studying all the way through the book of Proverbs. It won't take us much longer to finish the book. It, I mean, we're in chapter 18. It's only, I mean, I've only preached like 150 sermons so far, and so it's not going to take us long. <laughs> Maybe another two years. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going. Pray before bed. Before your children go to bed, get down on your knees and pray with your children. Amen. My mother, she used to read us these bedtime story books, and I'll never forget them, those orange books. Does somebody have those books? <laughs> oh, you don't have them? Probably Missy has them, probably. She had these little, and they were all Bible story books, Bible stories, and they were, I just, re, they were orange, you know it? And my mother would read those, and then they would get down on their, their knees and pray with us before he went to bed that night. Take your children to the church services. There's nothing better than that, amen? And my parents would bring us to church, six of us children, and I was the easiest one to get ready. The younger ones, I'm not going to say who the younger ones were, but they were harder to get ready. I, I know it. One time, just one time, I wore my pajamas under my suit. They had never found out, but they were hanging below my pants, so. I was going to be ready to go to bed when I got home. I'd take my suit off. You know, I was always thinking of those. I was a thinker. So get home, take my suit off, and I got my pajamas on already. I'm already, you know, I'm already. <laughs> take my nap. <laughs> oh, well. Uh. Take them to the church service. My parents, six of us, they'd get us ready. We lived almost an hour away from church, way out in the country, and they took us to every church service. That shows you the, the determination to get us to church, amen? They came, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, all the youth meetings, everything that was there, they took us to. They wanted to make sure, they wanted to make sure that God could speak to our hearts. Get them there. Because you know that Sunday that they come, that might be the Sunday the Spirit of God speaks to their heart, amen? Moves them to do something for God. <coughs> a good father influences his children by training them, by his faith, and then one last thing, by his example. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding. Be consistent in your Christian life. You want your children to be influenced for God, then you need to have a consistent testimony before them. The idea is being consistent. You need to be consistent. You know what? Our children are pretty smart. They're smarter than what you think they are. You think that they're not watching you. They're watching you every second. <laughs> Their eyes are always on you. They're watching everything you do. They're watching what you watch on TV. They're watching what you read. They're watching what you're going to do. Are you going to go to church or not? Are you going to be consistent or not? I know because I was one of those children. I was watching my parents. I was going to watch and see if they were going to do what they said they were supposed to do. They're watching you. What are you doing? You think, oh, they're not going to see this. Yes, they are. They see it all. What do you want them to be? You'd better be that. Be consistent. I, I think of King David. The Bible says he was a man after God's own heart. But you know what? There was a day that he did wrong, wasn't there? He did wrong. He sinned with Bathsheba. Cost him 
It affected his whole family. He lost the first child. The baby died. His son Amnon actually raped Tamar. Then Absalom killed Amnon. Man, his whole family. And then Absalom usurped the throne away from David, his own father. You look at the trouble that it caused, and you know what? It was because of one sin, wasn't it? He was a man. He was doing everything right. I'm saying, folks, you can do everything right and then do one thing wrong. It's hard, isn't it? We need the Lord's help. We need God's help. We can influence our children for God. Good fathers can influence their children for God. Let's be good fathers. Let's influence our children for God. We can do it. It was a farmer, and the farmer's fields were, were growing. I'm from farm country up in Michigan. Grew up on a farm. The crops were coming in. Man, they were growing. Then a storm came. It was a bad storm, and that storm uh, just uh, demolished all of those crops. Everything was flattened. Have you ever seen that happen? I've seen it. The crops are just flattened. The father went out there with his son in the middle of the field, and there he looked around, and everything is flattened. Everything has been destroyed. Uh, the day before, everything was fine. They were growing, and now everything is flattened. Everything is gone. And the father stood out there with his, with his son, and they looked around, and the son was waiting to see what his father would say. Is he going to curse God? Is he going to be mad at God? What's he going to do? What's he going to do? You know what that father did? That father lifted his eyes up towards heaven and he began to sing, Rock of ages, cleft for me. Let me hide myself in thee. And that boy, you know what he said later on? He said that was the most influential point in his entire life that influenced him for God for the rest of his life. His father didn't curse his father didn't get upset, but his father looked to God. He said, what an influence that made on the rest of his life to know that his father looked to the Lord. Good fathers can influence their children for God. Let's bow our heads. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Good fathers can influence their children for God. You say, you know what? I don't want to be that kind of father. I want to be that kind of grandfather. Good fathers can influence their children for God. I want to be that kind of father. I want to be that kind of father today. Would you pray for me? I want to commit my life to being that kind of a father. Here's my hand all through the building. I want to be a father that would influence his children for God. Here's my hand all through the building. Father and grandfather, I want to be that kind of person. Do you know what? We're talking about fathers here today, but you know what? Mothers, you can influence your family too. You say, I'm going to ask you. Mothers, you say, you know what? I want to influence my children for God as well. Would you pray for me? Slip your hands up all through the building. I want to influence my children for God. Thank you very much. Amen. We've got children. We've got grandchildren. We need to influence them for God in this day. Who's going to do it, folks? If we don't do it, it's not going to be done. We can't wait on the, we can't leave it to the world. We can't leave it to the schools. We can't leave it to our children's friends. We've got to do that. If we don't do it, it will not get done. We've got to influence them for God. I'm going to pray for you here today. And I would encourage you in just a moment. We're going to have a word of prayer and we'll have the invitation. You can come down here and commit yourself to the Lord to being that good mother, to being that good father, to influence your children for God. I'm going to invite you to come in just a moment after I pray, and I hope that you will. Don't be reluctant to come. I hope that you'll come, and maybe, maybe there's a child, maybe one of your children, maybe one of your grandchildren 
You know, maybe they've gone astray. You can pray for them. Ask God to bring them back. I believe if we train our children up, the Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. I believe they can come back to God, and I hope that you'll pray about that. One more question I have for you today is, do you know Christ is your Savior? If you're going to be able to influence your children, influence people for Christ, then you need to know Christ as your Savior. Is there one here today that would say, you know what, I'm not even sure that I'm saved. I'm not even sure that I'm on my way to heaven. I'm not even sure what that word saved means. But I'd like to know that I'm going to heaven. Would you pray for me? Could I pray for you right now? Would you slip your hand up? Say, pray for me. I'd like to know that I'm on my way to heaven. Thank you very much. I'd like to know that. I'm not sure about that. But I'd like to know about that. Could I pray for you? Would you slip your hand up and then put it back down? Anyone? I'd like to know how to go to heaven. I'd like to be sure about that. Maybe today. One more question. Would you say that you're thankful for your father? Or would you say, you know what? I need to be more thankful for my father. I need to be more thankful for them, for my father and what he's done for me. Would you pray for me that I would be more grateful and show more gratitude? Would you pray for me today? Would you slip your hand up and put it back down? I need to be more grateful. Would you pray for me? That can affect all of us. Amen. Thank you very much. You can pray for that father and even that grandfather today. I'm going to have you stand to your feet and then I'm going to pray. Then we'll have the invitation. We'll invite you to come. This is the kind of time that we come. We move out. We commit ourselves to the Lord. I'm going to invite you to come in just a moment. Dear Lord, be with the invitation today. Bless in the invitation. You've seen the hands. And Father, help us to be fathers that would be able to influence our children for God. And then, dear Lord, I pray uh, for that person today that needs Christ as their Savior. Help them to come to know Christ as their Savior today. And then, Father, for us as children, help us to be grateful and thankful for our parents, our fathers, especially on this Father's Day. Now, Father, bless in this invitation this morning. Father, you have spoken to our hearts. Now help us to be willing to move. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand to your feet. God's spoken to your heart already. This is an invitation time. Why don't you come right now? God's already moved in your heart. Why don't you come and make that commitment today? As we begin to sing, you come. Folks are leaving their place. Why don't you come today as we sing? You come. me.